The smell of sizzling bacon wafted through the kitchen as I plated Leon's favorite breakfast, a hearty meal to kick off his busy work day. Even with Mia clinging to my leg desperate for attention, I remained focused on getting every detail just right. After four years together, keeping Leon happy had become my obsession. Daddy! Daddy! Look at me! Mia squealed, tugging at Leon's pant leg as he rushed toward the front door, briefcase in hand. Leon paused and tuzzled her tangled curls. I gotta run, kiddo. Be good for mommy. He planted a quick peck on her forehead before shooting me a distracted glance. Thanks for breakfast, babe. I'll be back late again. Got a huge proposal to prep. I forced a tight smile, swallowing the hollow feeling in my chest. Sure, no problem. I'll leave a plate in the oven. Leon flashed his signature grin and disappeared out the door. Watching him leave made my skin prickle, an unfamiliar knot forming in my gut, the kind that signals something's not quite right. Shoving aside the feeling, I focused on getting Mia dressed and set up with her homeschool lessons. As I settled at my laptop to tackle my own work, my phone buzzed with an incoming call from Leon's number. I immediately grew tense. He never calls from work unless it's an emergency. Everything okay? I asked, my voice tight. A woman's unfamiliar voice responded, Oh, um, sorry, wrong number. Before I could react, the line went dead. That certainly wasn't Leon. I stared at the phone, my heartbeat thundering in my ears, as a sickly realization crept over me. Was Leon seeing someone else? No, that couldn't be right. We were rock solid, partners for life after everything we'd been through together. I shook my head to dislodge the thought, chiding myself for letting paranoia creep in. Before I could spiral further, a tiny hand grabbed my wrist. Mama, you K? Mia peered up at me with those earnest brown eyes, instantly melting my doubts. I squeezed her hand. I'm okay, baby. Mama just got a weird call, that's all. Now, where were we with your letter practice? For the rest of the day, I stayed glued to Mia and my work, determined to be present and not dwell on the mysterious call. Leon was likely just swamped as usual, no need to seek out trouble where there wasn't any. But as evening fell and I mechanically stirred the pot roast for his dinner, the knot in my stomach twisted tighter. Leon finally arrived home after ten, his shoulders sagging with exhaustion as he loosened his tie. I scrutinized every detail, his tousled hair, his weary expression, searching for any hint of deception. Long day, I ventured, unable to meet his gaze. Tell me about it. Leon sighed, shedding his suit jacket. I could sleep for a week after scrambling to pull that proposal together. His eyes finally met mine, his brow furrowed. Everything okay, Bryn? My heart seized as I detected a trace of guilt in his stare. Without thinking, I mumbled something about feeling under the weather before retreating to the bathroom. As I splashed cold water on my face, I realized the bubble of nagging doubt had cemented into an inescapable suspicion that my perfect life was nothing more than a carefully crafted illusion. It had been three days since the mysterious phone call, and Leon's suspicious behavior only intensified. The knot in my stomach refused to unfurl as I observed his absent-mindedness, the way his eyes constantly darted to his buzzing phone like a man awaiting critical news. I tried desperately to shove my doubts aside, to trust in the solid foundation we'd built over the years. But it was becoming increasingly difficult, with each late-night excuse and half-hearted kiss goodbye in the morning. When Friday rolled around, I decided it was time to take action. As Leon announced his monthly team dinner that would keep him out late yet again, I feigned understanding while an idea brewed in my mind. The second he left, I grabbed my coat and car keys. Mama, where are we going? Mia piped up from her coloring spot on the living room floor. I ruffled her hair affectionately. Just need to run a quick errand, baby. Back in a jiff. As I tailed Leon's sedan through the familiar streets, my heart pounded with a mixture of fear and determination. I had to know the truth, no matter how ugly it might be. When he finally pulled into the parking lot of an upscale restaurant downtown, I felt a flicker of relief. Maybe I had been overreacting, after all. That he is, until an impeccably dressed woman emerged from the bar entrance and slid into the passenger seat of Leon's car. My breath caught in my throat as he greeted her with a warm hug and a smile I'd never seen him wear in my presence. They drove off together, oblivious to my presence, and the last thread of doubt unraveled within me. 
I followed at a distance, my knuckles white from gripping the steering wheel as hot tears blurred my vision. Leon didn't meet up with colleagues that night. He took his secret lover to a high-end restaurant in the heart of the city, whining and dining her in a way he hadn't done for me in years. When they finally emerged a few hours later, I watched in stunned silence as he pulled her close and planted a scorching kiss on her mouth. My heart shattered into a million jagged pieces at the sight of my husband's obvious intimacy with another woman. I wanted to confront them right then and there, to scream and claw at the hussy who dared to infiltrate my family. But I knew I needed more than a heated moment to prove Leon's treachery to the world. So I waited, followed them to an apartment complex downtown, and burned the address into my memory before peeling away. By the time I arrived back home, the rage had settled into a cold, heavy resolve in the pit of my being. Leon was going to regret the day he ever looked at another woman while calling me his wife. As I closed the door behind me, Mia came barreling over in her footed pajamas. Mama! You were gone forever! She flung her little arms around my legs. I stroked her soft curls, my jaw clenched. I'm here now, baby, and I'm never leaving again. Leon would face the consequences of his despicable actions if it was the last thing I did. He was about to learn why you never cross a fierce mama bear protecting her cubs. The evidence of Leon's betrayal was undeniable, but a part of me still clung to the hope of an explanation, no matter how far-fetched. So I decided to catch him off guard by surprising him at work one day with his favorite meal. Maybe seeing me would shake him from whatever twisted other reality he was living in. I triple-checked the contents of the insulated lunchbox, making sure every detail was perfect down to the arrangement of the orange wedges. If anyone could snap Leon back to his senses, it would be the sight of my devotion manifested in his most beloved dishes. With Mia happily set up with her sitter, I headed downtown to Leon's office in the glistening high-rise. My heels clicked nervously against the gleaming lobby floor as I approached the front desk. Hi there. I'm here to surprise my husband Leon Davis with lunch, I said, forcing cheer into my tone as I gestured to the handled picnic basket. The receptionist eyed me skeptically, but made a quick call to announce my arrival. When she hung up, she flashed an artificial smile. Mr. Davis's assistant is coming right down to escort you up. My back straightened instinctively as a slim, stylishly dressed woman rounded the corner with a bright red ponytail swinging behind her. Up close, her deep auburn hair seemed almost garish against her pale skin. Bryn, I presume? Right this way. Her tone was clipped and impersonal as I fell into step behind her. We rode the elevator in tense silence, my grip tightening around the basket handle with each passing floor. When the doors finally slid open, she strode briskly toward a cluster of corner offices and rapped sharply on the furthest door. Mr. Davis, your wife is here. The words lanced through me with surprising force. Your wife as if reminding Leon of the vows he had so carelessly violated. The office door swung open, and there stood my husband in an expensively tailored suit, looking every bit the successful executive, at least until his expression morphed into one of sheer panic at the sight of me clutching his home-cooked meal. Bryn, what are you doing here? His eyes bounced between me and the red-headed assistant in obvious dismay. I swallowed hard, projecting a cool composure despite the storm raging within me. I thought I'd surprise you with your favorite lunch. Leon's gaze dropped to the basket, and he actually paled, like a child caught with his hand in the proverbial cookie jar. That's really thoughtful of you, babe, but I'm kind of swamped at the moment. A door opened behind me, and my heart plummeted as a familiar figure emerged from the adjacent office. It was the woman— the one I'd seen Leon embracing outside that ritzy restaurant. Only now she wore a form-fitting sheath dress and towering stilettos that could cut a man, and she was carrying a second lunchbox identical to the one I gripped in a white-knuckled grasp. Here you go, Leo. Mediterranean tuna salad, just like you asked. Her crimson lips stretched into a gloating smile as she handed the box to my gawking husband. It took every fiber of willpower not to unleash a torrent of virulent screams at the both of them in that moment. Instead, I calmly set my offering on a nearby desk and turned to go, pausing only to deliver one final remark over my shoulder. Best be getting back to work, then.
wouldn't want to distract you gentlemen any further. I spat the last word like a curse before storming out, tears burning hot streaks down my cheeks, the truth cut deeper than any dagger. Leon's affair had been going on right under my nose, and he hadn't even possessed the decency to make an effort to hide it from me any longer. Well, now the gauntlet was down. It was time to fight for my family, or burn his life to the ground trying. My hands shook with rage as I scrolled through the damning photos and financial records I'd uncovered about Leon's treacherous double life. The evidence was comprehensive, from incriminating pictures outside his secret love nest to bank statements showing monthly cash withdrawals for expenditures he couldn't possibly justify with his work income alone. I'd gone full whistleblower, digging into every nook and cranny until the truth came spilling out in all its sordid glory. Meeting the other woman at his office had been the final gut punch, propelling me into a frenzy of investigative vengeance. Everything had to be perfect, though, airtight and indisputable, so Leon couldn't pull another of his silky lies to slither his way out. That two-timing snake was about to get the ultimate wake-up call. The ding of the doorbell jolted me from my reverie. I quickly compiled the most condemning evidence into a tidy file folder and hurried to answer the door, surprised to see my best friend Jill's concerned face on the other side. "'Oh, honey, you look like hell,' she said simply, pulling me into a fierce embrace before guiding me back inside. "'Tell your old pal Jilly everything.' And I did, the sordid tale of betrayal tumbling from my lips in a torrent until the tears flowed freely. By the time I finished recounting the disastrous lunch ambush, Jill looked as stunned as I'd felt living it. Bryn, I, I don't even know what to say, she whispered, gripping my hands fiercely. That miserable bastard is going to rot for this. Her eyes then hardened to glinting steel. But you listen to me. You are not the one who failed here. Don't you dare let his pathetic actions make you feel less than the stunningly capable woman you are. I drew a shuddering breath squeezing back just as tightly. I'm going to gut him, Jill. Burn him to the ground for daring to betray me and Mia like this after everything we built together. Jill nodded sharply. As well you should. I just hope that skank he's porking is prepared to get hit by your shrapnel, too. A vindictive spark ignited within me, fueling the flames of vengeance already blazing in my heart. Oh, don't you worry. She hasn't even seen the half of what I'm capable of. Over the next few hours, Jill and I pored over my trove of evidence, formulating an airtight case and an ambush plan. If Leon wanted to play the loving family man to my face while spoiling his mistress behind closed doors, I'd give him one last taste of domestic bliss to remember me by. "'I'll arrange a special family dinner this weekend,' I said with chilling calm, the wheels turning smoothly in my head. "'Make it seem like I want to put this behind us and start fresh for Mia's sake.' and when that lying sack of crap least expects it. I patted the file folder gently. Karma is going to come crashing down on him like a ton of bricks. Jill's slow smirk was one of vengeful solidarity. That's my girl. He's not going to know what hit him. I would play the part of the demure forgiving wife one final time, but by the time I was through with Leon, he'd be groveling for mercy before a jury of his own shattered deceits. The ultimate betrayal came with the ultimate price, and I was the collection agent coming to call in his debts. The dining room table was set with my best china and an elegant candlelit centerpiece, the picture of marital bliss. Of course, it was all an elaborate facade, the calm before the storm I was about to unleash on Leon's deceitful world. As the bathroom door opened and he emerged looking dapper in a crisp suit, his brows lifted slightly at the romantic setting. This is... Quite the setup, he remarked, trying and failing to catch my eye as I busied myself with lighting the taper candles. What's the special occasion? I slowly turned to face him, my expression one of serene composure. I thought we could have a nice family dinner, talk things through like the partners were supposed to be. Leon's throat bobbed with a nervous swallow, but he managed a tight smile. That sounds really nice, babe. I'd like that. Liar. The word curdled in my mind stoking the roiling fury barely contained beneath my tranquil veneer. He'd like nothing more than to sweep all his indiscretions under the rug so he could go on living his double life unchecked. Well, not on my watch. When Mia finally joined us at the table, 
I made sure to lavish her with affectionate smiles and gentle praises to uphold the illusion of familial harmony. Leon seemed to relax incrementally with each passing bite of the gourmet meal I'd slaved over, the dim lighting and soft music lulling him into a false sense of security. This is really amazing, Bryn. I can't remember the last time we had a nice evening, just the three of us. His dimpled grin held an echo of the easy charm that had first beguiled me all those years ago. I simply hummed in agreement, hiding my clenched fist beneath the linen napkin on my lap as I waited for the perfect moment. Waited to unleash the full force of his sins upon his smugly content facade. Finally, as Leon leaned back with a contented sigh, I struck, sliding the manila file folder across the table toward him with a dull thud. He frowned quizzically until his eyes landed on the incriminating photograph clipped to the front, an image of him in a fervent lip-lock with his crimson-haired mistress. Leon's face drained of color, his mouth falling open in abject horror. Bryn, I can explain? Save it, I cut him off with an icy rasp. The evidence is all in there, Leo. Your Husband of the Year award must have gotten lost in the mail. With trembling hands he flipped through the file, taking in the photographs of intimate embraces, the bank statements detailing his expenditures on fancy gifts and a lavish love nest for his side piece. How did you— The words died on his lips as his gaze finally lifted to meet mine, the broken pleas of a man realizing he's been utterly undone. Did you think I was just some blindly devoted housewife, content to overlook your philandering ways as long as you kept a roof over our heads? I said, my voice deceptively soft despite the fury thrumming through my veins. You underestimated me, Leon. Just like you underestimated the meaning of the vows you made to me and the family we built. Tears welled in the corners of his eyes, but I felt no pity, only a grim sense of justice being served. I loved you more than life itself, he rasped. You have to believe that. A bitter peal of laughter escaped my lips. Your definition of love is pretty goddamn twisted, then, isn't it? Mama? Maya's tiny voice piped up, her brow furrowed in confusion at the tension charging the air. Is Daddy leaving again? My jaw clenched hard enough to crack molars. Actually, sweetie, I think it's time Daddy made his permanent exit from this house. Leon opened his mouth, desperately grasping for excuses, pleas for forgiveness. But I simply held up one hand, silencing him with a scathing glare. Don't bother. I'm taking Mia and we're going to start fresh, without the lies and betrayal contaminating our lives any longer. I rose from the table, drawing Mia's tiny hand into my own. You can have your disgusting mistress and your dirty secrets. Just know that you'll never sniff a shred of redemption from me again. His anguished sobs trailed after us as I led my daughter from the room, her innocence still shielded from the full ramifications of her father's actions. But I would ensure Leon paid dearly for every single tear, every broken promise. After all, the ultimate revenge is living well, and he was about to discover how capable I was of making a life without him. The deafening silence that enveloped the house after my dramatic exit was more suffocating than Leon's most explosive rages. I could practically feel the weight of his shame and regret saturating the air, crushing down on my chest until I could barely breathe. In the aftermath of unleashing my fury upon him, part of me had expected to feel vindicated, empowered by drawing that immovable line in the sand. But as I cradled Mia's drowsy form in the guest bedroom, all I felt was a hollow ache where my heart used to be. When sleep finally claimed my little girl, I tiptoed out to the living room and curled up on the sofa, permitting the first wave of tears to stream down my cheeks. Soft, wounded sounds escaped my lips as the dam finally burst on years of pent-up emotions. The anger, the confusion, the agonizing sense of betrayal. I had no idea how long I remained there, drowning in my private ocean of sorrow before the sound of shuffling footsteps reached my ears. I stiffened, hastily swiping at the traitorous tear tracks as Leon's hunched form appeared in the archway. Bryn, his voice was little more than a hoarse croak as he took in my puffy, ravaged countenance. Oh, God, what have I done? My chin lifted an inch, mustering the tattered remnants of my dignity. You threw it all away, Leon. Everything we built, all the dreams we shared, you shattered it all for some cheap fling. His shoulders slumped further, if that was even possible, as he visibly crumpled under the weight of my accusation. 
You have to know it was never that simple. What we had, it was everything to me once, too. His lower lip trembled with unchecked emotion. But somewhere along the way, I got lost, stopped appreciating all the incredible things I had right in front of me. So instead of communicating with me like a goddamn adult, you decide to start screwing around behind my back. I spat, my voice sharpened to a lethal edge. Jesus, Leon, we have a child together. Or did you conveniently forget that while you were off playing house with your little hussy? Leon's head dropped, his expression one of abject defeat. You're right. There's no justification for how badly I've hurt you both. If I could take it all back. She, well, you can't. I was on my feet now, the hurt and fury roaring back to life like bellows stoking the flames. Intentions don't mean jack when your actions have shattered a little girl's entire world. You're a lousy, selfish bastard, and I should have listened to my gut instincts years ago. Bryn, please. His hands stretched out in supplication, eyes glistening with desperation. Give me one more chance to make this right. I'm begging you. In that moment... My resolve solidified into an impenetrable wall of finality. How many more chances did he deserve after lying to my face for God knows how long? Shaking my head slowly, I forced myself to meet his splintered gaze head-on. No more chances, Leon. This path only leads to more hurt and more betrayal down the line. I'm taking Mia, and we're going to start fresh, just the two of us, free of all your poison and empty promises. Bryn, you can't. His eyes went wide with panic as the reality sank in. I'll do anything, change everything, just please don't take my baby girl from me. You did that to yourself the second you decided your little tramp ranked higher than your family's well-being. I lifted my chin, years of pent-up hurt and rage crystallizing into an unshakable wall of resolution. See, the thing about karma is, it always catches up with you in the end. With that parting remark... I turned and strode from the room without a backwards glance, my heart irrevocably steeled against the broken sobs echoing in my wake. Leon was the master of his own undoing, and now it was time for him to start atoning for his unforgivable sins. The very next morning, Karma's wheels began turning in earnest. I may have been the one leaving, but Leon's life was the one set to be utterly dismantled. First, I received a distressed call from his mistress— because of course she'd tracked me down, still cluelessly thinking she held some high ground. Her nasally voice rang with indignant tears as she berated me for ruining everything between her and Leon. Well, sweetheart, I'd say you've got worse problems than an angry wife to deal with right about now, I replied with a bemused chuckle. At her confused sputtering, I twirled the phone cord idly. Leon is about to be buried under a mountain of scrutiny at work and I'd bet every last dime that his next review won't go so well when those pictures of you two make the rounds. Dead silence answered me, save for the blonde's panicked, ragged breathing. She really was a stupid little thing, blindly thinking their clandestine escapades could remain hidden forever. The light dawning behind her thick skull was almost palpable. You, you're bluffing! Leon would never let you ruin us like that. Her bravado was as see-through as her morals. Oh, honey, ruining you is just the icing on top of Leon's towering shitcake at this point, I purred into the receiver. I'd say enjoy what little remains of your sad hollow fling, because reality is about to bite you both squarely on the ass. After a few more flustered protestations, she finally hung up with an infuriated shriek. Chuckling softly to myself, I settled back to await the next delicious wave of consequences about to crash over Leon's sordid world. Those dominoes were already toppling, all right, all by his own doing. And I was going to savor every last agonizing second of watching him reap the fruits of his colossal mistakes. The avalanche of consequences came swiftly and mercilessly in the wake of my split from Leon. Like dominoes meticulously lined up, each sordid revelation about his indiscretions triggered a new punishing backlash in his professional and personal life. It started with a terse email from his employer, one of the biggest tech firms in the city. The missive tersely summoned him to an urgent review meeting after incriminating evidence of his extramarital affairs had surfaced. Corporate speak for, we know you're a lying, cheating scumbag. Leon must have tried pleading, bargaining, showering them with the same silken lies that had placated me for so long. But in the cutthroat corporate world, 
moral transgressions like his were a fireable offense, especially when they put the company's reputation at risk. So while I focused on getting Mia enrolled in a new preschool and settling into our fresh start, Leon received the ultimate wake-up call in the form of a polite but final termination notice. All of his hard-earned successes and accomplishments flushed straight down the proverbial toilet thanks to his weakness for a pretty face and inability to keep it in his pants. Can you believe this, Bryn? His voice crackled over the phone, anguished, yet still tinged with hints of denial. They're taking everything from me, over what amounts to a personal indiscretion. I snorted derisively, not even attempting to mask the smug satisfaction coating my tone. A personal indiscretion? Is that what you insufferable pricks refer to infidelity as these days? You know I never wanted to hurt you or Mia, he began, because of course he was determined to rewrite the narrative as the hapless victim. Save it, I cut him off with a razor-sharp bark of derision. All I know is that my husband made the choice to break his sacred vows by rutting around town whenever his side-piece batted her eyelashes. Did you really think that wouldn't crater your entire life? That there wouldn't be consequences when the truth finally surfaced? A strangled sound answered me, a cross between a sob and a groan of abject humiliation. Good. He damn well deserved to feel the crushing weight of his failures burying him from all sides. You've taken everything from me? He rasped through what I could only assume were hitching breaths of despair. What more could you possibly want? For you to understand the full severity of what you've destroyed, I said, deadly even and resolute. Maybe then you'll think twice before dishonoring your marriage vows again. After unleashing that scathing remark, I disconnected the call without a second thought and focused on pouring myself a celebratory glass of wine. That was just the opening salvo, and already Leon's world was crumbling under his own sordid behaviors. But I knew the most brutal hits were yet to come. Sure enough, the next day brought news that his mistress had well and truly abandoned him to the smoldering wreckage of his implosion. After a final vicious screaming match where she berated him as a pathetic, sniveling coward, the hussy was gone, skipping town with nary a backwards glance. From what I could gather through back channels, the idiotic tramp had genuinely believed Leon would leave me and Mia to ride off into the sunset with her, as if his lies and infidelity were some grand romantic gesture instead of a series of selfish, deplorable misdeeds. Leon had gotten precisely what he deserved, tossed cruelly aside by the very person who had so thoroughly clouded his judgment with lust and empty promises, left flailing amidst the scorched remains of his once stable, enviable life, with no soft place to land and no one to blame but himself. While he struggled to find even a simple job to pay his mounting legal bills and missed mortgage payments, I flourished. Seizing the opportunity his ousting had created, I negotiated a well-earned promotion with a considerable raise that finally reflected my exceptional leadership abilities. As I stood in the gleaming new corner office that should have been Leon's, I couldn't help but emit a low, dusky chuckle. He had frittered away every scrap of the success we'd built together through years of back-breaking work and sacrifice. All for what? A cheap thrill between the sheets that had swiftly soured into his worst possible nightmare. The chuckle morphed into fuller peals of unbridled laughter, not cruel or mocking, but tinged with the sweet release of seeing justice finally served. Leon's crimes against me and Mia had not gone unpunished. The karmic scales had rebalanced themselves through his utter downfall and my soaring victories. For the first time in years I could breathe freely again without the nagging burden of a cheating husband's lies suffocating me at every turn. I was liberated, steadily rebuilding my life into something better than I could have ever imagined during those bleak years shackled to Leon's deceptions. The future had never looked brighter, or Leon so utterly dismal. He had been the architect of his own destruction through his staggering lack of impulse control and respect for those he claimed to love most. And in that moment, I felt something sweeter than any fleeting rush of petty vengeance could ever provide. The profound sense of having reclaimed my sense of self-worth and autonomy, of being valued for my talents instead of denigrated by a man's unfaithful actions. 
Justice, in its purest and most hard-won form, was indeed a dish best served piping hot straight from the crucible of personal integrity. Leon's betrayals had nearly buried me, but they had also been the catalyst to unearthing a resilience within myself that no philandering spouse could ever shake again. The future belonged to me and Mia now, and nothing, or no one, would ever threaten to derail it again. The first hint of vibrant sunlight peeked through the gauzy curtains, slowly rousing me from the most peaceful slumber I'd experienced in years. For a blissful moment, my mind was deliciously blank. No anxieties, no doubts gnawing away beneath the surface. Then awareness trickled in, chasing away the sleepy haze. Today marked another milestone in my journey of reclamation and rebirth in the aftermath of Leon's deception. Mia and I were scheduled to move into our brand new home, a fresh environment for crafting endless new memories, unblemished by his poisonous influence. As if on cue, a tiny form came bounding across the mattress, all tuzzled curls and bright, gap-toothed smiles. Mama, wake up, it's moving day, Mia crowed, bouncing with an endless well of childish exuberance. I swept her into my arms, smothering her cherubic face with smacking kisses until she dissolved into squeals of laughter. "'I'm awake, you little munchkin. Did you let the movers in already?' Mia nodded vigorously. Uh -huh. they're starting to pack up the trucks right now.' My heart swelled, drinking in her radiant joy de vivre. For too long, that spark had dimmed beneath the clouds of her father's transgressions. The lies, the emotional absence, the eventual shattering of our family unit— thanks to his selfish actions. But no more. Mia would grow up surrounded by stability, love, and a mother who fought tooth and nail to give her daughter the idyllic childhood she deserved, one where self-respect and integrity were valued far more highly than external trappings of success. Well then, we'd better get a move on and supervise, hadn't we? I planted one more loud smooch on her brow before swinging my legs off the bed, Starting new adventures is thirsty work. What do you say we track down the movers and bribe them with juice boxes when they're all done? The prospect of bribing the strapping young men loading our belongings into trucks clearly delighted Mia. She scampered off with a peal of laughter, tiny feet pattering against the hardwood in the hallway. I took a grounding breath, steadying myself for the next momentous step forward in our lives before rising to follow her. The living room was a whirlwind of controlled chaos. Burly men in uniform hauling boxes and furniture pieces with brisk efficiency while Mia danced around them, breathless with excitement. Miss Walker? I turned to face one of the crew leaders, an affable-looking guy with a maintenance truck's worth of pencils stabbed through his disheveled hair. Just about got the last of it loaded up and ready to roll whenever you give the high sign. I glanced around at the barren walls now stripped of any lingering vestiges of the life I'd shared with Leon. The photographs, the artwork, the once cherished trinkets and memories, all gone. All that remained was a blank slate waiting to be etched with new, unblemished experiences to be savored. All clear on this end, Mitchell. Lead the way to our new digs. I guided Mia out to the idling moving van where she bubbled with a never-ending stream of questions for the poor workers— they fielded her inquiries with surprising grace and patience, endearing them to me instantly. As my little girl clambered into the back seat, buckled in and ready for liftoff, I hesitated, drinking in the humble facade of the place that had once represented my long-cherished dreams and sacred vows. Now it embodied shattered illusions, nights spent crying myself to anguished sleep while Leon's selfish desires shredded the life we'd so carefully built. My throat tightened, old wounds threatening to reopen for one fleeting instant before I squeezed them shut. Turning away from the house, I refused to shed another tear. Not over something. Someone. So undeserving of my emotional fortitude and resolve. There would be no looking back, no wistful what-ifs weighing me down from this point forward. My focus remained laser-locked on the bright future stretching out ahead for Mia and me a life brimming with possibilities and successes earned on my terms. An emboldened half-smile tugged at my lips as I slid into the passenger seat beside my giggling daughter. We rolled away from the old house, Leon's ruined kingdom in the rearview mirror dissolving into the distance with each passing mile marker. I was free, free of his shackles and burdens and so much negativity weighing me down like anchors. 
What Leon had selfishly squandered was now my hard-won opportunity to soar higher than I'd ever envisioned in the darkest days of our unraveling marriage. As our moving van merged onto the highway, the open road unfurling before us, I inhaled the first breath of my new destiny with every fiber of my being. Just me, my resilient girl, and all the uncharted chapters of our journey still left to write. No longer a tragedy of broken trusts and derailed dreams, this was a triumphant story of rebirth, of finding the internal wellspring of metal to forge ahead when life tried its damnedest to shatter you into pieces. And in that moment, with the warm spring sunlight caressing my face, I felt indomitable. Victorious, exactly as a woman reclaiming her self-worth and sense of unshakable purpose should feel. Leon could keep his soulless indulgences and crippling regrets— the greatest rewards, wisdom, integrity, and unwavering perseverance in the face of ego-shattering adversity, were finally mine to clutch tightly and never relinquish again.